Hey guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Rules Prank Man video. And this time I'm going to be looking at this. Dallas the Television Role Playing Game, which came out from SPI in 1980. Now this is going to be a bit of a different uh, rules breakdown than usual. Because there are no physical rules for this game at all. Nothing, no physical actions are covered by the rules. So there's not going to be rules for having a fist fight between JR and Bobby. There's not going to be rules for car chases, anything like that. What the rules are all about are negotiation. So you can negotiate, you can seduce, you can investigate things. They're all about those bits of controlling power. So everything's going to be in the skills section for what skills it has. And basically all the other sections won't exist. But anyway, let's have a look at Dallas, the television role-playing game. So the skills are dealt with on page five. So if we flip forward to that, we can see character abilities and conflict resolution. And we've got persuasion, seduction, coercion, investigation. And we've got special abilities, which the games master, the director, can decide to add to things. And luck, which can be used to survive misfortune. Now, all of these involve rolling 2d6. But how you come to that is completely different. Because luck is just basically an attribute. So if we flick on to some of the characters on page 33, we can see all the characters blocked down here. And they have luck. And basically they roll 2d6 under their luck if they want to avoid a misfortune happening to them. But how you come to the target number for everything else is based on these other attributes which have two settings. One is for when you are attacking basically and one is for defending. So JR at the top here has a persuasion of 20 slash 16. So when he's attacking somebody else trying to persuade them he's using 20. When he is being somebody is attempting to persuade him, he is using 16. And it's the difference of these amounts that you use. So we have Sue Ellen down here, who has a seduction of 27. And JR has a defense of 16. So the difference between those two is 11 points. And Sue Ellen has to roll less than that to succeed. So she rolls 2d6. She gets 8, so succeeds. And obviously the gaps are a lot smaller between certain characters. Um, if Sue Ellen was attempting to seduce Bobby, for example, his defense is 20. So she would have been trying to get 7 or less. So she would have failed on that role. There's also different abilities here that Jock Ewing, the father of J.R. and Bobby, gets a plus 1 to resist or affect his child or wife, but a plus 2 to affect J.R., so he gets a bonus to convince JR to do things. And his um, coercion, sorry, his um, persuasion is 19, plus 2, 21. JR's is 16. So the difference is 5. So he would need a 5 or less to affect him. And we've got things like Sue Ellen, who gets a special modification to resist JR. She gets 20. So normally her is 18, she gets a 20 against him, his seductions are 20. And he cannot do it, because you cannot roll less than 2 on 2d6. Basically, if the difference is less than 2, then it's an automatic fail. If it's more than 12, it's an automatic success. Now, you can modify these amounts by your power. So JR has power here of 9. That, which means that during a story, he has nine points he can add to rolls. But once these points are used, they are gone. And he can use those at any point. So he can use them defending or attacking. But as I said, once they're gone, they're gone. But a way of recovering them is if he adds a three to the target number. So he is making it more difficult for him to do. He can steal a point of power from another character. So if he thinks he's definitely going to succeed against somebody, he's got a massive role, he's using his investigation here against, who's the worst, Ray Krebs of only 17, who gets a minus four against any Ewings. So he's got 13. So JR could take that automatic success, 
take it down by three points, so he's still needing to get a ten or better. And get steal one of Raycreb's points of power. Reducing Raycreb's power, but replenishing one of the points he's got, or even adding to them. Now, as well as the main characters, we've got other characters. If I flick onto the cards on page 53, we can see they have their own attributes which can be used. But they have their power. And power for these characters works slightly differently, in that it is automatically used to defend. So, MX Nevilstone here, the Texas publisher, he has a coercion of 2011, but he's got a power of 5, so he's got a coercion of 16 to defend there. But, as I said, all the rules are set out on page 5. So, we detail how each of them works. Persuasion allows you to get information on demand to relinquish control of a character or plot device. Come under the control of affecting character if the affecting affected character is non-player. Um, we've got seduction, which works pretty much the same way, but it notes that seduction can only be used against characters of the opposite gender who are not related to the seducing character. Now, I'm not sure how that works with J.R. and Sue Ellen, because they're married. I guess it means blood relations, so J.R. cannot seduce his mother. Um, but... Sue Ellen probably could attempt to seduce J.R. or even Bobby, even though they're not related, because they're not blood relations. We've got coercion, which works in very much the same way. However, if you're attempting to take control of a minor character and you fail, then the possibility of revenge, where everybody makes a coercion role against that character to take control of them. So you attempt to take control, you failed. Everybody else gets to make a coercion role and attempt to take control of that character until one of them does. So you lose out. Um, and investigation, where you can find out more information and target it at the Games Master to discover more facts about this scenario that you're going through. So that's about it. There's not much more to the system, and the other sections I would normally do in a rules breakdown video are completely extraneous, because there is no initiative system. It's just a matter of you enter the negotiation phase where everybody speaks, discusses with other players what they're going to try and do to them, and then you enter the conflict phase where you make all the dice rolls, and all that happens at the same time. So you just work your way around the table or whatever. There's no initiative system needed. As I said before, there's no combat system, there's no damage, there's no hit points. You're not going to be dealing with he health and healing at all. And there's no advancement, because all the characters stay exactly the same at the end of the story as they were at the beginning, and going into the next one. But one thing worth mentioning is the legal system. So, dealing with illegal acts by player characters. So... If a character does something illegal, I'm not sure how they're going to do that with no physical abilities, because they're obviously not going to be able to break in somewhere, but I guess it might come up in the negotiation phase that they talk about getting uh, information by nefarious means, or blackmail, or corruption. So they've committed a crime. Now, a player who has legal authority, so somebody like a controlling a police detective, the police department, the FBI, that kind of thing, can make an investigation role. Now, depending on the seriousness of the crime, you change the target number, subtract 2 for a misdemeanor, 4 for a minor felony, 6 for a major felony. And if you identify that that person has committed a crime, you get 3 victory points. Because, yes, this is a role-playing game where there's no victor, except this game has a victor. You are trying to win each scenario, each storyline. And you can keep taking that further, so you can get an arrest warrant. Making persuasion in his investigation, step one. Successfully obtaining an arrest warrant is worth four victory points. An indictment is worth five. A conviction is six. Um, convicted character loses all power for the rest of the episode. They're not out of the game since appeals could take years. So the character loses the ability to act because they committed a crime, it got investigated and dealt with. They are out of the rest of the game after that and cannot get any more power. And it also mentions how to win. So, dealing with illegal acts, um, you get to victory points based on one for each character, one for each major power you've retained, a number equal to the power value listed 
on non-major characters, and you get bonus points. So JR receives the following bonus point for each power marker that indicated characters have lost since the beginning of the episode. Bobby, Cliff, Pam, Sue Ellen. So he gets uh, three points for every point he's stolen off Cliff. And so on and so forth. Every character has their different ratings. So you accrue those points and then you decide who won the story. But that's it. It's an interesting negotiation system. It's not really something I think you could lift and put into another game. And the game itself is a bit of nonsense, really. This is far more like a CCG than a role-playing game. You're using ratings off a card, basically, and rolling dice based on the differences between those. I could see this being something very much that kids would play as Pokemon, except this is Dallas and you're trying to get power of oil. But anyway, as usual, I think I've witted on for quite long enough, so thank you very much for watching, as usual. But most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.